Okay, everybody, welcome back in. 21 off season, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, we're making a bunch of videos today. We've been all over the place. We're talking about the uh, defensive ends, basically edge rushers. I've got a list here of guys who are playing uh, defensive end or linebacker in the NFL, just in case uh, people in Kansas City are thinking about what's actually available right now in free agency. I've got 15 to 20 guys here. Um, it's an incomplete list. We'll look at it all here in just a second. A couple of news and notes before I get there. I try really hard to get right to the point with these videos because I think time is valuable and there's so much to talk about even when you stay on point. Okay, but uh, a couple of things. I, I think I announced back in March or uh, in January, some, sometime back in the winter, that I was going to switch over to a Kansas City only channel because so many of you only are Kansas City fans. I think what I'm going to do instead is just keep this as the Kansas City primary channel. I may even change the logos or the colors. We'll see. That way, all of you guys don't have to move over to some other channel and find a link or anything like that. You don't have to worry about that. I, I don't want to inconvenience you guys. If I do decide to put out some material on some other team or even on some other sport, I'll either just add it to this channel or I'll create my own little other YouTube platform and do stuff like that. So, but for now, this is going to be the Kansas City primary channel, and we will see if I can get up, get around to updating the logos and, and everything like that at some point. Also, I appreciate you guys watching videos. I've said this before, but not in a while. I appreciate you watching videos in which obviously the audio sucks. I've got a van, a, a fan blowing here today because my studio is 90 degrees, and I realize the visual effects. I'm using dry erase marker boards in here, and a lot of you guys keep on coming back, so I appreciate that. Appreciate you watching. I think that's what probably keeps a lot of people away. It's just because I don't have a very good audio technical uh, system set up. It's not very uh, splashy or professional looking, but I appreciate you guys coming in and getting, getting the material and checking it out. Today's list is very incomplete, and, but that's very real life. You know, when, when you're making decisions on the fly through training camp about who you want, who you don't want, this is almost a live list of who's available. I have not done the homework on these guys as far as injuries, whether or not they're actually able to return from an injury they may have had last year, uh, whether or not they can pass the physical, whether or not they've actually gotten into any kind of legality issues during the off season. If, if you guys know of anything here on, on these players and you want to put that in the comments, I would appreciate that collaboration. This is just strictly a list of who's available, how old they are, how many games they played in last year, how many games they actually started last year, and then what their uh, rounded off cap number was last year. Okay, so that's all this is. Some of them are too expensive, some of them are not even worth putting on the roster, and some of them are actually worth considering if you think a move needs to be made at defensive end. Now this is very important. Kansas City doesn't have any extra cap space. I talked about that during the previous video. If you guys want to get, dial, dial it back and look at that if you haven't already, they don't have an extra six or seven million dollars to spend. You can watch the other video to, to find out why that is. They really only can put out a million or a million and a half on one of these guys. Okay, some of these guys, like Justin Houston, one year four million dollars, too expensive really even for Kansas City. I know that's a little bit confusing. All I can say is watch the other video about why they don't actually have that kind of cap space, okay? But some of these guys could very easily slide in and play for a million to a million and a half dollars. They would simply take the place on the roster of some other player uh, in the top 51 who's also making about a million dollars. So most of the guys on this board are very affordable. I think only about three of them probably are going to be too expensive for Kansas City. Okay, Some of them, all of them, are actually... Pretty much veterans who are past their prime. Very few of these guys are still playing at their best. I think maybe one of these guys is still playing their best. We'll talk about him. But, uh, you know, the youngest guy here is 29 years old. Everybody else is 32, 34. Some of these guys had a brutal injury last year. Some of them just had nagging injuries last year. Some of them just weren't very effective. Some of them got replaced by younger players. There's all kinds of reasons why these guys haven't been signed yet. It doesn't mean that they can't come in. And I don't think that Kansas City is in a huge need to sign a starter. That, that, that's not what's up for grabs here. They've got guys who can play defensive end and defensive tackle. Whether or not they move Chris Jones over, I've already said I'm not strategically in favor of sliding Chris Jones over to defensive end. But if it means that they don't spend an extra 9 or $10 million on somebody and they don't restructure somebody needlessly, 
and borrow more money from 2022 and 2023, I'm all in favor of moving Chris Jones over to defensive end if that's the lesser of two evil options that I am given. I'd rather see Chris Jones stick it out of defensive tackle, maybe have somebody else move over to defensive end, give Chris Jones at least 70% snaps at defensive tackle. And, but if Frank Clark goes down at defensive end, uh, that may mean Chris Jones is over there for the rest of the year at defensive end. I understand, you do what you gotta do. But certainly the worst thing to me is to restructure more money and borrow from 2022, 2023. But they don't need a starter. What they do need, what they could need, even though they brought in Alex Okafor and that was a good deal, if you want to add somebody else who can play 25 snaps a game, who probably couldn't last the whole season as a starter, that can just be in the rotation, who certainly is past their prime, but can still contribute in some way on certain snaps and certain occasions, certain down and distances, then by all means, you look at this list and try to pick somebody out. Okay, let's start right here at the top. Justin Houston, already signed with Baltimore, one year, $4 million. They got a pretty good deal there. Olivier Vernon, I think is gonna to be too expensive. I, I just don't see any way that Kansas City should go after him. He's still playing pretty well. 14 games last year, started 13 of them. $11 million cap hit last year. We'll see what he actually gets this offseason. But I think he's going to be too expensive for Kansas City. He dropped down to Trent Murphy. And again, some of these guys are linebackers. Some of them are edgers. But if you can get anybody who can slide out there to defensive end and get pressure on the quarterback, and that's really what you need. You've got guys who kind of sort of hold up against the run okay especially with some of those big defensive tackles that can kick out to defensive end on the short downs and distances. But what you're really looking for out there at defensive end is either somebody who's so athletic that they can slide out and cover the screens and cover the running backs, or they can get pressure on the quarterback. That's what you're really looking for right now at defensive end. You've got Trent Murphy right here, 31 years old. $10 million, I don't think he's going to get that this year. I don't think he's going to be anywhere close to that, but, but I don't think that Kansas City's looking for that. What I'm really looking at right here is this group of players, Griffin, Shear, Jordan, and Beasley. Those are the guys who are kind of at least interesting to me to at least think about. Everson Griffin is a guy who's been a very solid defensive lineman in the NFL for a long time. He's not the player he used to be. He's not even close. But he is a guy who can come in and contribute and play solid, assuming he's healthy, assuming he can pass a physical, he played in 14 games last year, only started two of those, but he did play in 14 games last year. I'm sure that they would probably get him from a lot less than the $4 million, probably right around a $1 million, I would assume you could get Griffin for. The age does not scare me as long as it's a one-year deal, $1 million, and as long as he can pass a physical, okay? So Griffin's a viable option right there at defensive end. Javal Sheard is a guy who, there once upon a time, Sheard was an excellent defensive end in football. He could get constant pressure on the quarterback. And while he was never, excuse me, while he was never an elite edge rusher by any stretch, he was a guy who was a pain in the butt, all right, for opposing offenses to try to get after, excuse me. He would constantly get sacks and get pressure, get sacks and get pressure, and opposing offenses had to account for Jabal Shear. Now, he is not that player anymore, but assuming he's healthy and committed and, and, and can come in and pass the physical and play, he's the kind of guy who for 15 or 20 snaps a game, you would love to put him in at defensive end and I think probably get better pressure on the quarterback from him than you would get from most of the other defensive ends out there on your roster currently. Now, there are other guys out there on your roster for Kansas City who can slide out and cover the screens and cover the running backs and all of that out there in the flats more effectively than him. But if you're looking for somebody to just pin their ears back and get after the quarterback, Sheard will be an interesting option to at least evaluate, get on the phone with his agent, bring him in and take a look at him. Deion Jordan, if you're looking for a guy at defensive end, and I don't know that Kansas City needs this, but we're just talking through these players, okay? Deion Jordan is a guy who, if you want to plug in a defensive end, who's just a big guy. And Deion Jordan is a big, athletic defensive end. If you're looking for that kind of guy, he's the kind of guy you could get. And I would imagine you could probably get Jordan for $750,000, I would think. So the money would be right on Jordan. He's just a guy who can come in and eat snaps, help your depth. If somebody goes down, 
if Okafor goes down with an injury, or if Carlton goes down with an injury, or if fill in the blank goes down with an injury at defensive end, Jordan is a guy who can come in and eat up some snaps and not embarrass your team. Matter of fact, he would hold up pretty decently, okay? Jordan's that kind of a player. He's not going to get huge pressure on the quarterback. He's not going to go out there and cover every running back. He's not quite that fast. But he's pretty well-rounded, pretty effective. I think you would like Kevin Dion Jordan on the team for a season just to kind of keep uh, there from being a huge fall-off at defensive end in the case of an injury. Vic Beasley is the guy who's the most interesting to me. Beasley would be the guy who would either come in and get seven sacks this year along with more quarterback pressures, or he wouldn't work out at all and you would be releasing him by the end of October. All right, There's a very high amount of volatility here with Vic Beasley. When he first came in, not too long ago, with the Atlanta Falcons. He had a couple of seasons that were so impressive. He wasn't unblockable, but he was just a step away from unblockable. Very impressive defensive player. He is a shell of that today. Nowhere near that kind of player, but you could probably get him. He played 10 games last year. You could probably get him for, and it was with two different teams, you could probably get him for the absolute minimum, $750,000, $700,000, something like that. Bring him in, let him play some snaps, there wouldn't be a lot of pressure on him. He could just kind of fit in. And if he didn't work out, then you haven't lost anything. You could always bring in one of these other guys to play defensive end if you wanted to. Now, Beasley's not going to be great against the run, and he's not going to be great at dropping into the flat. But if you're looking for a guy who probably, even more than Jabal Shear, has had that ability in his career to get to the quarterback, Vic Beasley is that guy. It's just been a while since we've seen that, okay? It would be like catching lightning in a bottle. So that's your guy if you're really looking for somebody to kind of buy a lottery ticket with, okay? After that, there's a huge drop-off, um, Crawford and Irvin. They're 32 and 34. That's not what bothers me. What bothers me is the injuries and the age has kind of caught up to them. They are nowhere near the players. The Crawford made $9 million last season. Irvin made five. I don't think either one of those guys is, is really going to contribute a lot more to NFL teams this year. That's not to say they won't play. I just kind of really feel, when, when I've watched these guys play a little bit, I kind of feel like they're past their prime, okay? Bailey is a guy, you all know him, Alan Bailey from a couple seasons ago, played for the Chiefs before, played 16 games last year, started four, four million dollars. It's a guy you could bring in, but I don't think he's the kind of player who's going to add much of what you need at defensive end. I, I, I just don't think he's the kind of player. I, I still think he's got some mileage left on him, but I don't think he's the kind of player that can really make a difference for you at defensive end over what you already have. Okay. Shalit Calhoun was a guy who was kind of, uh, kind of well-renowned uh, when he first came into the draft, but never has lived up to it. He's only 29. You might get some, some production out of him, but I don't think you get a lot. Arcavius Mingo is pretty athletic, linebacker slash defensive end. He's done both in his career. He's the kind of guy, this is the kind of guy right here, who if you're wanting somebody to go out there and just be athletic and contain a fast quarterback, and you're wanting a guy who can cover a little bit and who can cover the, the, the wide receiver screens and who can catch the running back out in the flat, that's the kind of guy you're looking for right there with Arcavius Mingo. Again, how committed he is to football, how ready he is to come in and play and make a difference, I don't know, but that's the kind of guy you'd be looking at there. Most of these guys Kansas City can afford. I'm not sure they can afford K.J. Wright. K.J. Wright is 32 years old. That doesn't scare me at all. Matter of fact, K.J. Wright is playing some of the best football in his life. Excuse me. <coughs> K.J. Wright is playing tremendous football. He's been a huge success for Seattle for a very long time. He's played all the linebacker spots. He, he's a linebacker. You're not going to move him to defensive end, but if you if you were going to sign him, and I'm not recommending that they do because I think I think he's going to probably make seven, eight, nine million dollars this season. Probably he could get a two or a three year deal if he really wanted to. I don't think Kansas City is going to be able to afford that. I don't even think I would recommend that. Maybe, maybe, and I'm going against my nature here. What I've said on other videos, maybe. If I knew I wasn't bringing Tyron Matthew back, and if I knew I wasn't bringing Hitchens back, and if I knew I wasn't bringing back uh, somebody else at defensive end, defensive tackle, I can't remember who now. If I knew I wasn't bringing those guys back, I might sort of consider bringing K.J. Wright in on a backloaded contract. 
where he plays for us this year for like two million dollars and the next season I give him a guaranteed six and then the following season maybe I give him eleven million dollars unguaranteed as long as he's still playing well this guy is still playing very well and even though it's not necessarily your worst position because you've got Bolton and you've got Gay now at linebacker it would sure be nice to have somebody like KJ Wright here but I just don't think it's a smart thing to do for Kansas City financially, so I'm not recommending that. But just so you know who's out there, Wright's still playing very well at linebacker. Houston's still playing pretty well at defensive end. Byron is still playing pretty well at defensive end. None of them are anywhere near their peak anymore except for K.J. Wright. Some of them are years past their peak, but may still have the potential like Beasley. Uh, some of them are still pretty solid like a Jordan or a Sheard or a Griffin. That's what's out there. Some of these guys will be signed even before some of you watch this video. It tends to go very quickly here as we go through the training camp and as the NFL season starts. So there's, this, this, is, this is an incomplete list with a lot of things going on. But this is kind of what you're looking at. If you're looking to bring in somebody at the edge position, whether you use them as a stand-up stand -up defensive end or you use them at the linebacker spot just to kind of help support your defensive end position or you bring somebody in as your legit defensive end, just to get more snaps. This is what you're looking for. You're not looking for full-time starter. You're just looking for somebody who can come in and eat up some more snaps, and that's what Kansas City could do if they want to. I thought the, the Okafor deal was a smart deal. Okafor already knows your system, already knows your personnel, already knows your coaches. He's pretty good against the run. He does get some pressure on the quarterback. He holds up well. He's not really your full-time starter, but he can eat up a lot of snaps, and, and you're not hurting. Plus, you're paying him a whole heck of a lot less money than what you were paying for the last two seasons. So I thought that was a reasonably smart deal um, until I see for sure what they actually paid him on the uh, on all the per-season details. It looks like a pretty smart deal just from a personnel standpoint to bring him in. Okay, so this is what you're looking at. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye.